Hi students, welcome to my world. I am Satish, created Satish Leo Studies channel. The main aim of this channel is to make students to learn about engineering subjects in a creative, curious way and to make them knowledgeable. Simply not reading for more purpose. Okay. The main subject in the electronics and communication engineering is EDC. So let's start this. What is EDC? Why have to study EDC? Before answering these questions, we have to know about electricity. As I said in the previous video, electricity is the basics for electronics because electricity by using only we can make electrons that is electronic circuits can work. All we know that Electricity is flow of electrons. Okay, have you know that? But there is some history about electricity, which, as I said, there is some history about electricity. Let's see. When we go to past, but not using time machine, we are simply going to past. 2500 years ago, Greek found one substance called amber. Amber is a substance. It has some interesting qualities that is it attracts light objects when rubbed. So William Gilbert in 15 to 44 to 1603 made investigations and he learned many substances behind amber attract other objects. When activated by friction only, he called such attractions called as electric after greek word electron means amber means which is the substance found by the greeks so in greek word amber called electron so in this way we got electric name from the amber remember students but it is not handed here stephen gray 1729 observed that some instructions can transfer from one substance to another. Such substances which can transfer attractions called as conductors. As we know conductors we have studied well. Otherwise which do not have such attractions transfer called insulators. Afterwards Charles Francis Diofe 1698 to 1739 discovered two different types of attractions which can attract each other. So he named such attractions as positive attractions and negative attractions. The story not here in ended also. Scientists made further experiments to investigate. From this onwards, we require some physics, chemistry, and max knowledge to go to investigation students do you have so let's go all substances in universe in the form of solid liquid and gaseous built of tiny indivisible particles so indivisible means we cannot divide further such particles known as atoms as you all know atom a very well so atom consists of electrons protons and neutrons Neutron has no charge. Do you remember what is the charge of electron? D2. Proton positive. P for positive so proton. Atoms. Group of atoms called molecules. Group of molecules called compound. Group of compounds called matter. In this way there is a chain. So let's go further. Do you think there are only electrons, protons, neutrons in an atom? No, atom is made up of three particles, stable particles, electron, proton, neutron. What? We have three particles that is stable particles, unstable particles, composite particles. As you know, electron, proton, neutron are stable particles. We don't know these, so learn them. Unstable particles, positron, neutrino, antineutrino. Mason, composite particles, neutrino, alpha. 
what is the necessity of these particles these particles don't have much necessity when compared to these three particles maybe maybe these particles providing energy to above these particles so interested students can further read these unstable and composite particles and comment below so that sometimes scientists will going to burn in this channel what is matter matter means matter is equal to mass mass means weight space occupies i have so much matter do you want to listen so i am joking matter is a matter do you means matter is a single or it has types it is two types element compound so think again what is element some atoms sorry same atoms in a substance called elements combination of elements called compounds okay let's again same atoms in a substance called elements combination of elements called compounds have you asked your teacher why a neutron has no charge have you asked if not let's neutron is made up of quarks that balance each other so by balancing each other the net charge of the neutron will be zero okay so here again the previous question was solved but you have new question that is quarks what is quarks so quarks is subatomic particle having fractional electric charge okay so minimum so less electric charge particles called quarks these all particles are balanced with each other so neutron has no charge if anyone ask explain like this next have you asked your teacher teacher or have you wondered why electron moves but not proton have you asked let's see it electron has less very mass less very small mass compared to proton so electron moves but proton settles at center with neutron okay students why electron moves it has very less mass compared to proton so electron moves mass of electron 9.108 into 10 power of minus 28 g are less than 1836 times of proton mass that is so much small value that electron mass when compared to proton proton mass 1.6726 into 10 power of minus 24 g neutron mass same as that of proton so these two particles settle at the center while having less mass electron is free to move having less mass means having less weight so less weighted persons can run first when compared to heavy person okay so in this way but remember the charge of electron and proton are same and opposite charge of electron is -1.6 into 10 to the power of minus -19 coulombs charge of proton plus +1.6 into 10 to the power of minus -19 coulombs these are two same but having opposite charges so i asked previous question what is edc electronic devices and circuit okay this means electronic devices and circuit why have to study edc I have not said in the previous so let's see electrical systems uses electronic devices to control the current to flow in them okay so that's why you have to study electronic devices means with electronic devices current can be controlled in the electrical systems but what is electric current have you know s yes, all we know flow of electrons called electric current that's it have you asked yourself why electron have to move 
so one reason is electron has less mass so think again having less mass means moving no let's clear this electron particles in different energies called energy level that is electron presence in different energies called energy cells or energy levels I before said that having less mass means moving so if a person means if he is to move he moves but electron is not a person it has no intellectual properties or intelligence to move but what makes electrons to move let's say it the energy of an electron is proportional to its distance from nucleus i said different energies different energies means let's energy of electron is proportional to distance from its nucleus means distance from the nucleus energy of the electron depends but how so what i have said don't simply learn it ask me you have to ask yourself so that we can gain knowledge energy levels of electrons in cell away from the nucleus are higher means new cells having far from the nucleus having higher energy than the energy level of electrons in cell near nucleus so it is easy to remove valency electrons because it requires less energy to move another atom okay but have you gone to what is valency electron let's find out electrons present in outermost cell called valency electrons from this real story begins when electron has moved to outermost cell of its atom it is least attracted by the positive charge of its proton means let's consider the diagram here in the middle it is called nucleus center part of the new atom nucleus is the center part of the atom in this nucleus there are neutrons plus protons in this circulated by the cells so in these cells electrons will present this is the first cell second cell that is the third cell it is the outermost cell we have okay as i said electron in the outermost cell has less attracted by the its proton as a result if enough energy is applied to the atom some outermost cells or valency electrons will leave the atom okay these electrons are called free electrons so we have to remember important point in this is electron does not travel on its own if you apply some energy to the outermost cell of electrons they will only leave that atom and travel to another atom so these electrons are called free electrons what is the necessity of these free electrons let's remember the free electrons are responsible for flow of current so i hope you understand well so students one thing i always tell you that please learn anything in question and answers way so that you can achieve your knowledge simply learning about for mocks is making yourself which is not suitable for you because mock solely goes out there is no importance but developing knowledge will always keep you high and this knowledge will present in your mind and it helps you to grow so please subscribe my channel share and comment below and like it so that i can make more videos in this way so that i can make engineering in easy way and curious and to make you learn for making knowledge but not for mocks thank you students for your cooperation